Buonasera, signore e signori. Welcome to Early Music Television. <coughs> We have been looking forward to your visit. My name is Antonio Vivaldi. As you see from my habit, I am a priest. Although strettezza di petto, a tightness in my chest now prevents me from saying a mass. <coughs> Here, in Venice, I am become known as the Red Priest. I inherited this distinction from my father. My red hair, <laughs> not the priesthood. My father's name is Giovanni Battista, and he is a distinguished violinist in the orchestra at the Basilica San Marco. My father is my first violin teacher, and we still play sonatas together at home for amusement. Our entire family <coughs> lives together <coughs> in the same apartment, <coughs> but is it convenient to my work here as a director of a music. <coughs> This is the Ospitale della Pietà, an asylum for homeless girls. Here we protect them. Those with talent, we train as musicians. Our girls have a reputation for giving the finest concerts in all of Venice, and I have written many concertos, especially for their performances. <coughs> Of all of my concertos, the most popular, both with the public and with my girls, is La Primavera, the spring concerto from the Four Seasons. I compose the music to paint a picture, rather like a musical poem. Spring awakens, and joyfully the birds greet her with a merry song, while the brooks, fanned by the gentle breezes, murmur sweetly as they course along. Thunder and a lightning, chosen to proclaim her, envelop the air in a black shroud. The birds, having meanwhile fallen silent, finally resume their melodious singing. <laughs>
in Venice we have four charitable institutions which we call ospedale. They uh, take care of orphans or outcasts. Before these institutions were established, countless numbers of unfortunate children were thrown into the canals of the city. <coughs> Most of the girls who we take in are illegitimate, though many are from the upper classes. Not infrequently, our girls come to us supported by a sponsor who makes a generous contribution to our charity. <coughs> Here, <coughs> at the Pieta, we can accommodate 6,000 girls. Those who demonstrate a talent earn the special distinction filiae del coro, meaning they are among the select group we train as musicians. <coughs> Those supported by homage or a special gift are given the elite distinction privilegiate del coro. Every Sunday and holiday, our girls give a public concert in a chapel. They perform in a special gallery built as a loft above the ground level where the spectators gather. And to preserve their virgin modesty, they are hidden from view by a lattice of ironwork. About 40 girls participate in each concert. They sing all the parts and they play every instrument in the orchestra. The violin, a flute, organ, oboe, cello, even a bassoon. <coughs> I assure you, there is nothing so lovely as the sight of a pretty a young nun in a white habit with a bunch of pomegranate blossoms over her ear, conducting the orchestra and the beating time with all the grace and a precision you can imagine. <laughs> but uh, most of our girls never take religious vows, and uh, many of them have attracted the affections of the most respectable young men in Venice, and thus have gained deserved riches. <laughs> Every day, our girls are visited in uh, that reception room by gentlemen who would like to be suitors. <coughs> Aside from music, our girls are initiated in the feminine occupations by accomplished ladies, pious matrons who volunteer their services to inculcate the girls with modesty and uh, propriety. The finest musicians of Venice are among those who come to our concerts. Even the singers from the opera come. <laughs> They hope to develop a genuine taste, based on our excellent models. <coughs> An important part of my responsibility here is to compose new music for these concerts, both vocal and instrumental. I supply concertos and the sacred music, such as motets or psalms. On special occasions, I even write oratorios on a feast day. The libretto of my oratorio is distributed at the door of the chapel so the public may identify their favorite singers. <laughs> Distinguished visitors and aristocrats observe the concert from private lodges in the chapel, rather like those in the opera house. The ordinary spectators sit below. Of course, no one is allowed to applaud in church, but our public nevertheless shows a great appreciation by coughing, loud nose blowing, or by uh, shuffling the feet. <laughs> I'd like you to hear a special something that I wrote for Mass last week. I choose the poetry because it combines a spiritual message with the pastoral imagery, which is now so much in fashion. I'm afraid that the Latin is quite corrupt. The serpent hisses among the flowers and the hides its venom among the colors as it coils. But, inexplicably, the man, driven mad by love, often licks it as though it were honey. Hallelujah.
My father insists that Venice is no longer the wealthy mercantile city that he knew as a child. But, uh, as you can see, uh, the powerful citizens are not entirely ruined. <coughs> this family maintains a palace on the Grand Canal of the city and even manages to support an opera house nearby. This villa is a part of their estate outside Padua where the family is engaged in farming and banking. From mid-June through August, <coughs> when Venice is burning with heat, the family comes here for a refreshing stay in the country. Tonight, they have invited dozens of guests for a great feast. And to provide the musical entertainment, they have contracted me, <coughs> along with 36 other musicians from the Pietà in Venice. <coughs> for the occasion, I have composed two new concertos and a cantata. The Venetians cannot live without music. This is true not only for the aristocrats, but also for the ordinary citizens. In church, <coughs> I have witnessed women who will uh, weep, cry out or faint upon hearing a solemn motet sung by a great singer <coughs> in the front of the cathedral. If a shoemaker or a smith uh, should uh, start a tune, he will always be joined by others of his sort who will uh, sing the tune in parts, with accuracy and even with taste. <coughs> the gondoliers are famous for singing and their original songs would fill countless volumes. <coughs> so Notorious is the music of our city that we have begun to export it with the hundreds of foreign tourists who visit each year. I earn much of my income uh, from selling manuscript copies of music to visitors from England, France, Germany and the Low Countries. I employ several copyists, <coughs> including two nephews, so that I can profit many times from selling the same piece of music. Some of my customers are great princes, like Cardinal Ottoboni, who resides in Rome. He has purchased many concertos and a few of my best cantatas. Perhaps I can sell him a copy of the cantata I wrote for tonight's performance. It should please his taste and that of his circle in the Arcadian Academy. I understand that Cardinal Ottoboni organized the Academy as a group of literate nobles who meet to contemplate the ideals of pastoral poetry. 
<coughs> and to stimulate the discussions, which last for hours or even days, uh, they like to listen to cantatas like this one. My text contemplates the agony that flows from the suspicion of a betrayal between lovers. Uh, my final aria distills this uh, complexity of emotion into an essential feeling, amplified by a metaphor. Uh, let me read you the lines. False happiness is the real torture of a faithful lover. Beauty, merciless, is barbed with those glances that waver with distress. This is the stage at the Teatro Sant'Angelo, where I present most of my operas. 
The citizens of Venice and the tourists love opera so much that they support its production in six different theaters. Three of these theaters have presented my operas. <coughs> Sant'Angelo is my favorite. Here, I am not only composer, but the impresario. <coughs> this opera house was originally built by a group of noble families who live nearby. And they still own the property, but they allow me to control my own productions. I contract the musicians and I hire the designers and the construction team to build the costumes and the scenery. <coughs> and these are the least of my financial concerns. Some of my operas require a chorus and a corps de ballet. But the most expensive items in my budget are the half a dozen principal singers. Those in demand charge such exorbitant fees that they will surely be the ruin of the opera in Venice. <coughs> the worst are the castrati who expect to be pampered in every way. Out here, beyond the proscenium, most of the spectators sit in boxes that are stacked in four tiers surrounding the auditorium. <coughs> Many of these are private boxes here at Teatro Sant'Angelo are owned by noble families. Some have held them continuously since the theater opened in 1677. The boxes allow some privacy, and uh, some distance from the smell of the gondoliers and the workmen who crowd into the pit. <coughs> uh, though I can scarcely turn a profit on the sale of tickets alone, I do quite well on the concessions. We serve hot meals in the boxes and uh, sell baked goods in the pit. <coughs> we also keep the bank for the games of chance that are played uh, during the opera. My success here in Venice has allowed me the opportunity to write operas for other cities as well. This season at Carnival, my operas will be presented at Mantua and at Prague, and for the opening of the Teatro Filarmonico in Verona, my setting for La Fida Ninfa by the great scholar and poet Scipione Maffei. He seems to be pleased, especially by the scene in which Elis, god of the winds, bravely tames a terrible storm. After he uh, dispels the menacing clouds, Elis and the goddess Juno sing a triumphant duet of thanksgiving which ends the opera. Spirit in the marily, qual nuovo fremito. Fanno el orgoglio, in questi orribili, due grotte rapidi, i navi satemi, navi satemi. Boca non speri si per lungo spazio I ceppi ferei che giova moderne Sotto il mio imperio Qui convien tremere Spitindo mabili Indomabili Derbe fiori, di fiori e terre, adorno il sol, adorno il sol. Non deme che splendeva, sopra l'uso in cielo il sol, e per tutto riderà, derbe fiori, di fiori e terre.
Thank you.